Hi guys, listen, I wanted to create a video to show you uh, what happens inside your body in relationship to insulin, fat burning, the effects that it can create, and give you a real uh, inside demonstration of what it looks like. So we're gonna do some animation through here, okay? Let's first start out with this one image right here, which we have the pancreas right here, and the pancreas makes certain hormones. One hormone it makes is called insulin. And the location of the pancreas is underneath the left rib cage, but extends over to the right a little bit. And it, it's triggered by sugar, okay? So when you eat a carbohydrate-rich meal, and the faster that it turns into sugar, like certain things will turn to sugar fast, other things are slow. That's called like a glycemic index. Um, like celery would turn into sugar very slowly, candy would be very fast. So as soon as the sugar spikes in the blood and it goes above a certain level, it triggers the pancreas to make insulin. So now we have this insulin that connects into the cell. So insulin actually will remove the sugar out of the blood to bring the sugar down, okay? And what it does is it feeds the cell. One of the functions is it feeds the cell. So it's kind of like a little chef that uh, it feeds the cell its food, okay, its fuel. So you can look at um, insulin also as a key that opens a door, allowing the cell to absorb glucose, okay? So as glucose goes inside the cell, now we have a situation where the cell is filled with glucose and it's being fed. Now there's a signal that then will go from the cell back up to the pancreas and tell the pancreas to turn off because it's been fed. So we have this on-off mechanism. It's called a feedback loop. And all the hormones have this feedback loop where the, the hormone is sent across a distance, it does its function, and then it's, once it's done, it sends a signal back letting know, the gland know it did its job as an acknowledgement so then it can turn off. If this signal is off in any way, then the pancreas will continue to communicate and send more hormone when you really might not need it. Okay, so we know number one, insulin feeds the cell fuel, okay? Then it helps you store sugar. So here's insulin, it comes in here, takes the sugar out, feeds the cell. Number two, it actually stores sugar in the, mainly in the liver, but some in the muscle as well, and some in the kidney, some in the brain, and some in the white blood cell, but mainly the liver and kidney, that's where the storage happens. And the body stores sugar as something called glycogen, that's the name of it. It's a, glycogen is a series of glucose molecules strung together in a chain. So there's two main types of fuel storage in the body. We have the glycogen reserve, and then we have the fat reserve, okay? The glycogen reserve, which is the sugar reserve, is roughly only 1,700 calories. It's very, very tiny, versus 70,000 calories on a non-obese average person. So we have 70,000 calories for fat versus only 1,700, that's 1,700 for sugar reserves. Okay, so insulin helps in the absorption of fuel in the cell. It helps in the sugar storage, which is called glycogen reserve. And number three, it converts excess sugar and carbohydrates into fat. Okay, so fat comes from the excess carbohydrates. So as soon as the blood sugars go too high, it convert, insulin converts it to fat in the liver. So it's dumping fat into the liver and dumping fat into the body, specifically in the belly area. This is the storage around the liver and start spilling off into a belly, a fat belly. That's where it's coming from. So in this section, I'm gonna talk about what is excess sugar in the blood. Normal blood sugar is between 80 and 100, okay, milliliters per deciliter. This basically means you have one teaspoon of sugar per all of your blood. On an average person, it's roughly one and one third gallons of blood. That's normal. An average American consumes 31 teaspoons of sugar. So you can imagine how much sugar that is in your body. Your, your insulin needs to deal with it, so it has to get this toxic sugar out, protect the cells, and dump it into the reserve, which is your belly. So it's converting the excess sugar to belly fat, and that's how it works. Okay, so the next thing that happens when you have too much sugar over a long period of time and too much sustained insulin, 
we developed something called insulin resistance, where the receptor that's supposed to receive insulin becomes blocked, okay? Now what happens is now the glucose, the sugar, can't get into the cell because the key is not working to allow the cell to be fed the fuel that it needs, okay? So because there's no signals inside the cell that the glucose is getting in there, there's no feedback loop to the pancreas to turn it off. So we have an incomplete communication. It's like someone's talking so much but no one's listening. So we have the situation where no off switch, the body compensates to drive more insulin to try to connect with this little key, to try to drive the key in there. So a person with insulin resistance has five to seven times more insulin than a normal person. This is pre-diabetes, okay? So what, what happens is all this excess insulin goes throughout the body, but it doesn't, it's not becoming effective. In other words, it's not bringing the sugars down. It's not feeding the cells. What it's doing, it's going in storage is belly fat. So we're dumping more and more insulin that's converting this uh, sugar into fat in the belly and making a fatty liver. Other symptoms, there's four main big symptoms with insulin resistance. Your fatigue, especially after you eat, like eat lunch, you want to take a nap. Number two, you have cravings for sugar and carbohydrates. Number three, you have excessive urination at night because wherever the excess insulin is going, fluid is following it. So you're actually, the, you, the, sometimes you have glucose coming to the urine, you're going to be peeing more. And also you're going to have a lot of brain fog, memory issues, you'll have inflammation. There's a whole list of symptoms that you can have. So there's several other purposes of insulin that go beyond just glucose going in the cell. Number one, protein goes in the cell with the help of insulin. Without insulin, you can't absorb protein, amino acids, in the cell. That's why diabetics have loss of muscle collagen, muscle weakness, they can't build muscle, they have joint issues, disc issues, a lot of protein issues. And potassium, the major mineral or electrolyte, which is potassium, will not go in the cell as well, thereby having fatigue, high sodium, that's gonna get high pulse rate, high blood pressure, arrhythmias, heart arrhythmias, skip heartbeat, palpitations, edema, swelling in your feet, poor sleep because potassium helps relax your body, muscle cramps, constipation, gout, kidney stones. Okay, so insulin is needed for other things as well.